Hi everyone, so today I'm drawing something for Mason's room. We only have one empty frame left, which is a bigger size, which I want to leave last to fill. And then I've got two frames which I want to replace, so one of them is right here. I um, made originally three flamingo paintings and I quite liked them, those were the first ones hanging in his room, but now because I have the other illustrations as a collage, they don't really work. I will leave one of them because I really like it, but the other two I want to replace. And for today I kind of feel like doing a cacti and because the other um, illustrations so far are more within the four of them they're more within the blue kind of tones i want to bring a little bit more color so um that's the frame it's going to go into it's an ikea frame and uh if i can i will take a picture later of how it looks okay so i have uh, drawn out a illustration right here and that's just a quick sketch just to give myself an idea of the shape of the cacti now i have tried something different here in terms of the flower that's not usually how i draw or paint cacti but um i do like it i want it to look a bit more whimsical and so i'm going to go for a spherical cacti and i'm not going to add any pots i will just create a little shade underneath just to um, settle it in Okay, so for the watercolor, I'm going to use the palette that I uh, created recently. I will try and put a link uh, below to the video. And then I think I might as well use this one, which is the Duochrome Cactus Flower. So it kind of works nice because of the name and what I'm painting, but I'm not entirely sure. I might just add um, a few accents here and there. I think I'm going to leave it with a pencil and then I'm going to mix up a color that sort of will be like a bluish kind of um, color. I actually really like these wonky lines here, so I'm just going to create them a little bit more here makes it look a bit more like a cacti because they're not perfectly straight they have that ragged look to them Okay, so I'm going to go into the Mine Blue Genuine, which is around here. Okay. It has actually cracked. It tried the hardest and the fastest out of them all. And then it cracked. And you can see it's a beautiful color. So I'm going to go into a green now, which is the sub green. And it gives me that beautiful subdued type of a green but I still want more of the blue <clears throat> and now I'm going to start by outlining the edge I want this cacti to have a lot of texture and um, a lot of kind of blooming and all of that so I'm going to use quite a bit of water and I'm also considering using some salt as well so while it's nice and wet I'm going to grab some salt
and just add it here. You can see how immediately the color is absorbed. And then I'm just going to play with a variety of these blues and greens, adding a bit more blue, adding a bit more of the other green, and just creating different shades, which really makes it nice and illustrative. So I'm leaving uh, a few of those white highlights, as you can see. And then just dabbing in some water, like so. And just a little salt this time. There we go, that's better. And then I'm going to go into the gold green and create a bit more of a greeny color and I'll also let them bleed into one another because that only looks more interesting because we are using water color after all so when I'm looking at this green at the minute it's not really making me too happy because it's a bit too green but I will treat this first uh, wash as just a wash and then I will go over the top sort of creating um, other shades Now I'm going to take this color that I've used just now and repeat it in other places just to uh, make it a little bit more coherent so that it all belongs together in a way rather than just separate sections if, if that makes sense. So I might, I might as well add a bit of this lovely green and clean my palette as I do. I have now contaminated my yellow. So this is the Indian yellow. A very pretty color. I'm just going to touch it in some sections and you can see, oh my goodness, that's what makes me happy. When I paint with watercolor, this beautiful, beautiful magic watercolor now I'm careful not to do it too much because otherwise it will uh, stop being special so if you just sprinkle this color in some areas it um, it kind of will stand out a little bit more but also what I want to do here is just create a bit more of a edge like so so it looks a bit more finished and that works quite nicely and then I'm going to go into the Mayan blue and create quite a dark mix mm -hmm. so you can see what I'm mixing here but I'm going to go even darker and then what I want to do is just dab it in some areas where I want it to be the darkest. So basically at the bottom and some of it here on this side because that's the 
darkest side here so I'm going to go now where the ridges are which you can see here that we created and then quite a bit more here at the bottom still so that it starts looking a bit more spherical watercolor becomes yeah well done it becomes more interesting when you start playing with it and think out of the box a little bit um, mix up the same sort of color with different tones and have fun is is the advice I could give so that's that and then we're going to use that same mix but I can also add a bit more blue and just emphasize it again around the ridges like so just so that you separate the sections and it looks really rather stunning also I'm going to darken it up a little touch under the flower to suggest a shade there like so and actually having done this now I don't think that I will need any washers just because I really like the way this looks and I'm going to leave it at that and then actually I'll use some of this color for this baby flower like so I might add a little bit more of that green from here just to again have that bit of a variation there and now I'm going to start on the pink now the pink of course needs to work really well with what we have created so far because if it's going to stand alone as a color it will not work very well so I need to be very careful now not to touch that green um, that is still wet because it's going to create mud uh, so I'm just being careful here and what I'm trying to do is again play with the tones okay okay with the um, tones different tones I want to create a lot of interest as much as I did on the cacti and trying to figure out how to do that as I go so I'm going to dub in some of the yellow and that is nice so this is quite a dominant color and it's pushing the pink away which I'm actually liking the look of this and And then I'm going to add this pink a little bit in the bud and let it dry before I continue. Okay, so I have decided that the flower, uh, I wasn't too happy with how it looked, so I added a few more petals and let's see just going to fill those in now and I also added another flower here on the side to create that kind of um, you know three the number three which always looks good and I think this one I'm going to go a bit more red but I will break this color down and I think it will look quite nice to have different colored uh, flowers. It might not happen in real life. I think usually you, you get the same colored flowers on a cacti, but that's the beauty of illustration. You can just let your mind be 
creative and go with it and create something that doesn't exist in the nature. So at this point I'm going to take a little bit of that yellow and add it a touch into this little butt right here and then try to uh, work with these petals here as well. And now I might just do a little touch of glazing here and, and there and just see what happens. Just bring a few of those colors together and create some interest. I might take that red through as I did with the uh, with the um, yellow here just to add a bit of contrast. I'm going to add that onto here as well. There you go, the butt will have a bit of everything as well. And at this point it's still early days to start adding um, that color into there, the um, yellow into the red because it will just all blend very very quickly so I'm going to work on the center for now using quinacridone gold and Indian yellow by Daniel Smith making sure I'm going to add uh, leave highlight in there and at that point again I'm going to wait a little bit before adding yellow into here quite like this area Actually, let me just try and do it a little bit around to see what happens. Yeah, that's quite nice. Mm. So that looks quite good. There is something with this flower that's nagging me. I think I want a bit of that red onto here, onto this petal, just to glaze it a touch more. Bring it in like that. And what I'm going to do now, because of the green mostly dried here, I'm going to pull it, that red or the orangey color, I'm going to pull it slightly down to fill this wide gap between the flower and the cacti. And then I'm going to do the same thing here where I can see the flower is dry so I'm going to merge them together a little bit and I think that is it now I need to think about doo -doo 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 -doo, just trying to think actually I'm going to go back into that pinky color and I'm just going to add it where I'm thinking a shadow would be so probably around here on this side and at the minute it may not work very well because there's quite a bit of yellow that's still quite wet so I'm just going to leave it like that and for now again I'm going to wait for it to dry but the green looks really really pretty so I'm quite happy with that so at this point I need to now add a little bit of that quinacridone gold just on one side here as a little glaze and again just to suggest a bit of a shadow make sure you have very little water in your brush so that uh, will be more effective and then I'm going to go in with that bit of red just over here and then again with very little water in the brush I'm just going to try and move it out so before I do too much of it I think I'm going to stop at this and the other thing I want to do is just I'm going to sharpen my polychromos make sure that the tip is very sharp and I'm going to use the black pencil just to add the little uh, needles in the cacti and possibly some of those um, centers of the flowers this is what it looks like now I think I was hoping that I was recording the uh, shadow but I think I might have uh, 
not done that so I've done the um, paints gray um, bit of shadow underneath just to settle the cacti into something and at that point um, I think the camera switched off so I'm just going to now wait until it's completely dry to remove the salt and show you what it looks like okay so here's the little guy and looks so cute and um, he actually came out a bit more uh, brighter than I uh, was hoping for but Mason seems to like it and yeah it was super fun to paint and hopefully you can see the beautiful salt effects right here great to add um, onto textures uh, onto flowers or anything that you're drawing that requires a bit of texture and here you can see that again so yeah I kept the detailing quite simple and just let the watercolor um, talk for itself and I'm going to put it into a frame and come back and show you what it looks like. So it's all done now and um, that's what it looks like. And yeah, so I'm really happy with the whole thing. It looks super pretty and can't wait to hang it on Mason's wall. So thanks for watching and see you soon.